in run to the next station. You won't have switches for or turnouts further out. So that's kind of the philosophy there. And if the station is huge, then you'll usually have a signal box at both ends because otherwise the run of uh, metal bars to control the points or the switches at the other end of the station will be too heavy for the, uh, the signalman to uh, push. Also, if you have a signal box at each end, it does mean that each signalman is responsible for trains leaving and arriving from his side of the station and he doesn't have to he doesn't have cares about the stuff at the other side which he doesn't have a direct line of sight to and they didn't have cctv cameras way back then either so the result is at least as far as um, half of the layout is concerned it is two lines through a countryside with no switches whatsoever which is fine and I haven't actually bought any switches but now that we have this um, little bit of a windfall there is the consideration of maybe I might order some instead of making two circles of track that I can just run trains around to be amused by while I finish off the countryside bit of the layout scenery and stuff I could finish the entire track work because I can now afford to buy the track and then worry about this. You know, I could then model both sides of the layout with the station on one side and the, the countryside on the other. We'll see. We still have, I was talking about getting a new PC. Well, that hasn't happened yet. And I do have a. Um, I usually keep an eye on Digital Storm's website. They seem to be the cheapest. I don't know whether they're the best. It's Mrs. Oso and my PCs are both Digital Storm, and we're very happy with them. They really haven't given us that much trouble. So. Um, I may go there again, but obviously I keep an eye on their um, their site, what they're offering, just because it's easier to, you know, if you want to buy a new car, you'll do research in Ford, Chevy, whatever, and you'll compare what they have <coughs> and make a decision, yeah, okay, which one do I prefer? But then what you might do is, um, I'll just keep an eye on what Ford is offering at the moment on their 2024 models. And when they bring out the 2025 models, I'll do a comparison and I'll see what new features are now available on this car that weren't available last time. So with PCs, at the $2,000 price point, how much memory do I get? What graphics card do I get? What processor do I get? How big of a hard drive do I get? And um, Digital, Digital Storm just did an update for June. And their $2,000 PC, they've actually stepped the processor back from, I think, Previously, they were offering an i7, 14th generation, and now they're offering an i9, 13th generation. That raises a question, do I want a 13th generation, or do I want a 14th generation? Because I don't need something, I don't need an i9, I don't even think I need an i7, although this PC is... I think an 8th generation i7. I'm kind of thinking I can make do with a uh, 14th generation i5. Um, and typically the 14th generation chips come with DDR5 RAM, which is fast, um, and the i7s come with DDR4s, which are slower. And I think that's the problem now. It's gone from a 
an i7 with DDR5 to an i9 with DDR4. The graphics card's better. I think it's uh, an RTX 40... 70 Super rather than a 4060. Yeah. And, but the hard drive and the I think the amount of memory you get is the same. It's just that you're getting a slower memory. So I don't know. It seems to me that you're paying for the um, the step up in processor, which I'm not sure for my application I can justify needing that amount of power on the processor I'm using. So, yeah. But they do allow you to edit what, what you're getting, so I could just um, I could go for the $2,000 computer, downgrade the processor, leave the memory, or yeah, just juggle around what's available, go for a cheaper processor and upgrade a different piece and still pay $2,000. Or I can go off to one of the other PC suppliers and say, okay, I now know, I now have a, um, a firm point that I've been tracking for six months so I know what they're offering at that sort of price I can then go out to the other manufacturers or PC builders and see what they're offering for the same price and then you make the judgment call of okay these guys are offering me a lesser processor but the RAM's better the pro graphics is better the hard drive's bigger maybe I'll go with them type of thing Okay, I guess we'll get this. So where are we taking this, by the way? Uh, that's not the button I want to push. I want to push that button there. That's a good button to push. And the wheat. I thought I got collect I got paid for that. That's probably why my bank account looks so small. Uh, we just did field 18, so the wheat is fully harvested and needs to go to exports. Okay, then. And I believe... Ooh, that one there is exports, yes. That was correct. So in spite of the fact that this field is rather convenient for the uh, grain mill, that's not where we're going. I just got stuck. So yeah, that's the other option. I could get a new PC. Or I could do something else. We need some new gutters, I think. Our gutters keep getting blocked. And uh, there was a rather major thunderstorm middle of this week. And we just had a waterfall out the backyard. So at that point, you know, or, or, you know, all the way along in front of the back windows. So it's like, yeah, that... That needs to be done. And for some reason, I've been getting a bunch of commercials on YouTube for a local company. Seems to be fairly new. That do, you know, are in the gutter business. I, I, I've never heard of them before. Now, I can't say that they're a new setup who are trying to get gutter installation business or whether they're existing and they just Google just happened to throw them in front of my face this week 
but um, they keep turning up. Which of course prompts me to think about my gutters, because my gutters do need something to happen to them. We'll see. Gutters won't cost that much, I don't think. I think the big thing would be to get leaf guards on the gutters so that the downspouts don't get clogged up, which I think is what the problem is. finished and we got paid for it. So 781. If we go and look at the contract here now, it should be about $81 from 18 to 24. It's not even. Huh. Well, it is what it is. We'll collect the money anyway because we like money. It's a good thing. And the next stop is the canola. We could check where that's going before we leave. It's coming to the same place. Now, I'll go back by the main road because it's the straighter trip. Um, actually, let's pretend we're in England and not in uh, on the continent or in America. So there's a little rise there that we have no problems making. Generally getting from our yard to exports isn't too much of a painful process. It's just round this corner we just start this long climb up, which is why getting to the grain mill is such a pain in the butt. So there's a short rise there that would drop us in speed. I'm thinking more coming the other way. This grade also isn't too heavy. We might we might have a slight slowdown, but I don't see a three mile an hour struggle up this rise. And then we come round here and we have this one. This one is absolutely horrible, but coming from the canola field, we'll be going downhill with the wind behind us. So this actually even empty and 300 odd horsepower. We're struggling to get up this hill. I wonder if trucks do any better. I don't know. Okay, where's the opening? The opening is here. We can't see the darn thing, so we'll zoom the camera in and take it a little bit wide so we can swing in here. Okay, so going down to exports from this field, I don't think is going to be too bad of an issue. That's now all ready to go. Now, this field is canola. Um, it is a crop that we can take to the grain mill and make canola flour. Although, I did Google this week. I'm not sure canola flour is a thing, but canola powder is. 
So maybe you take the grain, you know, canola to the mill and make it into canola powder normally. Unfortunately, our grain mill just makes generic flour. Um, this mill also makes soy flour, which is a thing, and corn flour, which is also a thing. Again, output is only generic flour. Um, there was a mod this week today um, that created a grain or that allowed you to buy a grain mill where you could process corn and soy and make corn flour and soy flour. So it wasn't just, uh, yeah, make another type of use another product to make the existing generic flour. It was, you actually use um, the mill to create a specific flour. Um, and it was part of the pasta factory. Um, you can use normal flour or soy flour or corn flour to make pasta with the new and the mod provides you with a building for a, a mill building and a pasta factory building with a load and unload points. And it also provides you with an unload point which turns a nearby building into, say, a mill. So if you put a corn um, soybean unload point next to I don't know that house that we see between the trees on the right there um, that would turn that house into a corn and soy mill just by having the unload point so it's not that it creates So you can, as yeah, the idea is is you can use the existing building. Uh, blah blah blah. Oh yes. Ew, huh? Hang on a sec. Can I will just um, deal with this? Yes, deal with this. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Okay, sorry about that. Let's uh, keep rolling. And let's turn that off. Yeah, the problem with people like that is I want to provide you with a service that you will pay me for by breaking the terms of service you agreed with when you signed up for your. YouTube, Twitch, yeah, whatever account. It's like, yeah, if I take your services on, I can end up getting banned. It won't affect you. You'll just, I can just pay you for that privilege. It's like, I'm not going to chance it. I mean, one of the one of the things I noticed recently. Okay, so the restriction on when you can release your videos to another video service so I always copy all of my streams in 30 minute chunks out to YouTube approximately 30 minute chunks out to, out to YouTube there used to be a restriction that basically they wanted you to wait 24 hours after your stream finished before you started posting excerpts on YouTube so there, there was basically an exclusive period 
I believe one of the recent um, terms of service updates they re they removed that requirement. Now I don't know that it was what enforcement they may or may not have taken had I posted my YouTube my videos to YouTube before the 24 hours had passed. Um, just that. Um, I mean, potentially you could end up with sanctions if they got annoyed with you. Um, although it kind of read like, we'd like you not to. How about you give your Twitch viewers a chance to view this for 24 hours on Twitch and see our ads before they go off to YouTube and um, watch YouTube's ads and make YouTube money. So, you know, I could understand it, but I think they... It seems to me that they've now removed that restriction, so um, in theory I could just take today's video and drop it off to YouTube as soon as I'm done here. Um, I don't. Um, typically once I'm done streaming I will go and have lunch. I will not um, I'll not sit at the computer for couple of hours I may go off and do other things like shopping or woodworking or other stuff um, and then later on this evening once my back's recovered a bit I'll come back I'll sit down at the computer I'll split up the videos and I'll post them off to uh, YouTube and get them scheduled for release over the coming week it's the way I do things I'm not going to um, I don't think the streaming software I have will only stream to one place. So I can either stream to YouTube or I can stream to um, Twitch. I can't simultaneously stream unless I pay for the upgraded professional version. Um, but once I finish streaming, it, it's, it's frequently at the point that I need to go and have some food or I need to go and sit on the couch and uh, rest my back because it's in pain. But either way, I'm not sitting at my computer for another hour after I'm done with this. I can't see again. Oh, that's close. So anyway, how are we doing? It is, oh good grief, game time 6 o'clock, so it's, the sun is going to be setting soonish. Uh, how long is this? The field's longest edge is this one. It's a little unfortunate because there's that vicious little ski ramp at the end. Which is causing us struggles. Anyway, what's this second? It's a big field. Um, oh, wait, it's bigger than the last one, I think. But yield may not be quite so high because canola does not yield well. It's worth more. Forty-six percent, two ways round. I'm gonna guess it's gonna be not much more than one tank from the harvester. We will have to empty at least once, but um, the uh, the grain trailer will not be anywhere near full. That's fine. We're not even halfway after two headlands, so we're going to get quite a bit of the, ma the main field done too. Uh, 
and the harvester is what is it? It's a third of the grain trailer capacity. But we're generally having weight issues with the grain trailer. For this, the Stratman might be the better trailer. Um, it has a 52,000 litre capacity, I believe, whereas the one we have here is 47 and a half. But the, the one we have here is capable of hauling more weight. So we have less issues with We, we never fill it up by volume. We always fill it up by weight, so far, for the grains that we're harvesting. Okay, let's... Well, actually, this is nowhere near far enough across.